bodhisattva work to help us, you know, in this new in this new age uh, to to share the teachings and to practice together in the way that we're doing. Um, big a deep bow to each and every one of you, and it's uh, it's lovely to be back with you again. Uh, I I like to get gallery view so I don't have to keep looking at myself and I can look at all the other other fr uh, friendly faces. Um, so for those who are new here for the first time, um, my name is Hugh Byrne and I teach with the Insight Meditation Community of Washington, IMCW, um, and uh, part of the IMCW Center, <clears throat> excuse me, Center for Mindful Living in Tenley Town, where the class really originated. And in the last year or so, we've been over in uh, at Iona, uh, Iona Senior Center in, uh, in in Tenley Town until we as uh, we moved online. And I think we're, this may be about the 18th week we're doing. And so things are working pretty well technically and we're always dealing obviously zoom issues can come up and different things can come up imcw access issues but things i think are going pretty well and so really a, a, a very warm welcome to to each and every one of you wherever you're coming from and however you express yourself and identify in the world, you know, in terms of sexual orientation, race, ethnicity, gender, gender identity, any of the kind of expressions of our humanity are welcome here. And uh, I hope everyone really feels welcome in, the, in, in this community. It's, um, you know, the Buddha said, uh, Sangha, the word for Pali word for community, is all of the spiritual practice. All of the spiritual practice is community. That the illusion that we have when we're suffering, when we're caught up in craving, or we're caught up in aversion, or we're caught up in stuck in one thing or another, um, is that we're separate. We're separate from, we're on our own, we're isolated. You know, often it's a feeling of we're carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders. You know, all the things we might say about, oh, this is so much with the pandemic, with the political situation, with the uprisings around racial justice. This is, you know, it can feel like, wow, how do I hold this as well as everything going on in my own life, my own situation, um, you know, all of the individual things that we're dealing with in our lives could be health issues, could be financial, maybe we've, we've lost our job or we're fearful about losing our job or, you know, we're dealing with, you know, younger, young kids, you know, and all everything that's going on around that, the uncertainty around the schools and, you know, am I going to have to, you know, do homeschooling, you know, uh, um, but, you know, basically the uncertainty of that, of, uh, you know, what will be happening, what will be happening and all the different expressions that it can take. And in recent weeks, I've, <coughs> excuse me, I've talked, um, you know, quite a bit about, you know, this moment w that we're living in um, because it's, you know, I feel it's, you know, it's essential. It's kind of what we're, all of us are working with. And if, if, in somehow, you know, if somehow we we're just talking about the practices and the teachings in isolation from that, it would be like, you know, an elephant in the room and, you know, that needs attention. Um, having said that, today I do want to focus more on the practice itself and the teachings themselves, kind of look at um, a theme of, um, what I call it, the art of meditation, the art of meditation. Excuse me, I'm just gonna. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and before I do that, I want to just mention a couple of things, uh, more logistical things before jumping into the reflection. Um, one thing is that uh, if we, we are live streaming the, uh, the class today, and so if you are watching live on live streaming or later as the recording, just to know that there'll be 
um, probably around 15 minutes or 12 minutes or something in that range of time where there's, you know, an interlude that those of us who are on the Zoom call will be, you know, typically in, uh, in, in smaller groups. And so just to, to mention that. And just to say that the, the form of, format of the class, I normally begin with with a reflections on a reflection on the teachings, on the practices, some theme of of teaching or practice, um, and uh, and then you know that could be fifteen minutes, maybe sometimes it's a little longer, and then we have a kind of an arriving meditation, uh, uh, fifteen normally keep that to around fifteen minutes. And then we do some sharing. Um, I hope today we'll be able to do it in, uh, in the smaller groups, which is really an opportunity for each one of us to you know, speak normally about, you know, what's alive for us, what's going on for us, what we're working with, you know, in a mindful way, in a conscious, mindful, you know, mindful speaking, mindful listening, um, set up in that way so it's not just kind of a back and forth as we might do in 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 our regular lives but kind of more more attention to it and then we after that maybe we'll a little sharing in the full group and uh, and then emily um will lead us in movement and that's always lovely to just come into come into our bodies sometimes in you know if we're lifelong meditators we can do a lot of sitting but without without really taking the time to kind of stretch and walk and you know which is so essential because otherwise you know a lot of stuff can come up as we know so we'll have some uh, some movement and then uh, we'll have a a, uh, a, a, a a final meditation followed by some announcements and and uh, typically if you like to share in a more social way uh, there um, folks stay on you know maybe it's a third of the people um in the class stay on when you know get a cup of tea or a bite to eat and just do some sharing about you know whatever's whatever's coming up wherever the conversation goes and just to know about that uh too that you're welcome uh, to to stay for that <clears throat> so i think that's what i want to share around the um the uh the logistics and the class itself. And so this, the questions I wanna begin with today are pretty basic ones and that they're, they're, what are we doing here and where are we going? What are we doing here and where are we going? You know, and when I say here, you know, I obviously don't mean just this class, but when we come, when we come to meditate, when we meditate, whether we do it on our own whether we do it in a class or on a retreat, what, what is it that we're doing? Um, and, and where are we going? What are our kind of goals and our in, intentions in, in doing what we're doing? And it's good, I think, to, to begin with the question, you know, what is this that we're doing? You know, this kind of practice that's at the center of our time together, this practice of meditation. Um, you know, what is meditation? And I'm not gonna, you know, there's many, many different forms of meditation and there are many different ways that people meditate in different traditions and, you know, philosophies and religions, etc. You know, from Hindu meditation to Christian and Jewish meditation and, and uh, transcendental meditation, different med forms of meditation, different goals. That would be a very interesting discussion, um, and uh, but it's not one that I'm I'm going to kind of explore today. What I, I I'll just focus in on the form of meditation that we do together um, here in this you know in this community and in this tradition. <clears throat> so really, it's a question: what it what is you know, what is Buddhist insight meditation? Because that's really the practice that we're doing. Insight meditation, mindfulness meditation, sometimes called um, vipassana meditation, which just is another, is the Pali word, the original word in the, in the Pali language for, uh, for insight or for seeing clearly. You know, so we talk about mindfulness really as a practice and vipassana, um, 
insight as really a, a fruit of the practice. You know, a fruit seeing clearly comes from the practice of paying, paying attention. So if we talk about this practice very simply, we could say that the, the, this insight meditation involves meeting our experience, present moment experience, without judgment and with kindness. That's kind of what the practice of mindfulness is, with the goal of freedom, with the goal of deep happiness available here and now in this very life, not in a future lifetime or in some other existence, but here and now in this very life. So, you know, two parts of that really one, just the practice itself, what are we doing when we sit and pay attention to our body, to our breath, to our emotions, to our environment um, in a particular way, you know, without judgment, with kindness and with acceptance. And you, if you've been here more than a few times, you'll be very familiar with those, you know, those encouragements in the instructions of kindness, acceptance, curiosity, etc. Um, and then as the outgrowth or outcome of the practice that, uh, that we can um, find freedom in our lives. So, um, and as I, you know, I, I often quote Arjun Chah, the great uh, 20th century Thai meditation teacher, Buddhist um, uh, meditation master, um, talking about um, what the fruits of letting go are, you know, of this practice of opening to our experience and letting go of any clinging or holding. And he says, let, let go a little and you'll experience a little freedom. Let go a lot, you'll experience a lot of freedom, a lot of happiness. Let go completely and you'll experience complete freedom, complete happiness, complete peace. Your struggles or your struggle with the world will be at an end so that we can, we can let go a little or we can let go a lot. Ultimately, we can let go completely. That that's kind of what the, what the, um, what this path of practice promises. And what I want to keep coming back to is we have to see that for, for ourselves. We have to explore that for ourselves. It's not a, a cookie cutter thing of, you know, you put in a certain amount of this and a certain amount of that, and then you get enlightenment or you get greater freedom in your life. You know, it's clearly we, we have to engage with the practice ourselves um, and through our own experience, not through some theory or other people's experience, but through what is going on for me right now. And how am I, <clears throat> how am I meeting what's going on for me right now? What's my attitude? What's the quality? Is there clinging? Is there resistance? Is there spacing out? Or is there a genuine willingness to be with this moment as it is without judgment, with kindness, with acceptance, etc.? So certain things, certain, so the question then is kind of what, what, are we, what are we doing when we come here and um, where are we going? One of the key things is that nobody's telling me or you or any of us where we should be going. You know, you should want complete liberation or you should only want a little bit of liber a little bit of freedom. It's up to each one of us to decide and determine, you know, what is our goal? What is our, what is our objective when we sit down to practice? I don't just mean in that 15 minutes or half an hour or whatever, but in the arc of our practice, in doing these practices, the, the practice of meditation, and obviously as well, bringing mindful, mindfulness into our daily life. What is, where are we going? What are we seeking to achieve? To, I don't want to say achieve, but um, yeah, in some way, it's kind of, it, it is, an, it is a, um, an attainment that, you know, doesn't end up once you get there being anything that you kind of, oh, I got here, here, you know, that we own or possess again, but, but we are going somewhere. And it is, you know, we're on, 
on a journey. So on a spiritual journey, a meditative, a journey on a meditative path. So you might just think for yourself, what, how do you, wh where do you place yourself in your own personal journey? What is, what is your goal? What is, you know, what do you, what do you think are the possibilities for you in this lifetime, you know, in the incarnation that you're in, that we're in right now? You know, is it, are you practicing? And, and I ask this question completely without judgment or this is better than that, but are you practicing to find some calm in your life, to find some, you know, a little bit of peace as Arjun Chah, let go a little, you know, find some peace in your life. That nobody has any authority to say that's not an appropriate goal. You know, somebody might say, well, that's, that's great. And there's a possibility of going farther as well, that letting go a little leads to, you know, the potential to let go a lot and, and, and perhaps to explore, can we let go completely? But nobody, there's no shoulds about it. It's for each one of us to kind of say where we are. And where we are at a given time may not be the same place one is a year later or five years later. We can begin, we might begin by saying, oh, I just want a little bit of calm. I'm really stressed out. I'm really anxious. Um, I just want not to have less anxiety in my life. That would be enough, you know, and that's, that's great. But as you do that, as you practice, you know, for some months, maybe for a year or two years, you begin to maybe see, oh, I'm not quite as, you know, I'm not the stress bunny that I was. I'm not anxious in a way that, 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 that I was. Something's shifting. And that tends to be, kind of an encouragement to say, okay, what about if I let go a little bit more? What if I set my goal to, you know, a lot of happiness, a lot of freedom, you know, that, that, that maybe, and it might express itself by, you know, meditate, meditating more regularly, you know, through a, a daily or regular meditation practice. It might express itself through going on longer retreats, you know, a day long, a weekend, a week long retreat, and just explore what happens when we really open for, a, let's say, a longer period of time to all that's arising, as we do in, in the meditation, you know, but typically it's for a shorter time. And, you know, sometimes, you know, if we meditate for 15 minutes or 30 minutes, there's so much static that by the time we're finishing, you know, often, maybe sometimes, you know, we're just about getting settled or maybe we're not even settled or maybe we're so stressed that it's just, we just need a rest and we spend most of the time kind of zoned out or sleepy or whatever. So, again, just to kind of hold that question in awareness for, for, for each one of us of what... Um, you know, where are we going? What is our intention? The great philosopher Yogi Berra said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. So if, you, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. So it's important that we, we have a sense of where we're going. So I just want to emphasize that as, a, as an important question for us. So like, where am I going? Not in a tight way, not in a like, oh, I've got to get there, or am I there yet? But more like, what is, what is the kind of arc of my, of my intentions? Where, where would I like to go? Is, do I think it's even possible to experience liberation, what the Buddha talked about as kind of the deepest freedom? <clears throat> In this lifetime, is it is it possible? So each of us kind of can determine where where we are on the path and and what our goals are on the path. Um, <clears throat> the second kind of element that can help us along, um, help us on 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 the path, help us to kind of go from here to towards where we're seeking to, to get to, to find some greater freedom in our life or let go of, of you know, some of the stresses of our lives. What is really helpful for us is to 
have a map, have a road map of the terrain that we're walking on or driving on or however we're navigating the sense of where we're wanting to get to. And one of the things that I find extraordinarily precious and inspiring is that the Buddha 2,500 years ago or so laid out a roadmap for freedom that is, I believe, is the deepest expression of human consciousness and human, the human psyche, um, not as an abstraction or as a theory, but as an actual roadmap for direct experience. <clears throat> so he wasn't just saying, you know, in the way that brain scientists might say, well, you know, we have, you know, this is how emotions work and this is how, you know, other stimuli work and this is how the brain works. And that's wonderful what we've come to see, particularly in the last 20, 25 years or so in terms of the brain. But what the Buddha did was to actually talk about direct experience and like what happens when you pay attention, when we pay attention without judgment? What do we tend to see? What happens when we follow, let's say, these two main kind of areas of, of the Buddha's path, of the Buddha's roadmap? The first, he talked about abandoning what is unskillful, kind of abandoning the clinging, the craving, the unskillful, unwholesome mind states of greed, hatred, and delusion. What happens when we let go of that? And then <clears throat> the second kind of part of the path, main kind of part of the path, being to cultivate the good, cultivate loving kindness, cultivate compassion, cultivate equanimity, generosity, gratitude. <clears throat> these mind states and quali these qualities of mind that lead towards happiness, that lead towards well-being, towards freedom. So these two kind of main forms of practice, if you like, the kind of the, the letting go of what's unhelpful and unskillful and the cultivation of what is beneficial, what is what it what what um, leads to our to our benefit and to our well-being. So we have this extraordinary, extraordinarily deep and uh, comprehensive roadmap of consciousness, how to cultivate particular qualities of heart and mind, how to let go, what are practices for letting go of clinging, letting go of hatred, letting go of delusion. What, what are ways that we can do that? So we have this, I, for me, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm just speaking myself, we have this incredible roadmap available to us of the Buddha's teachings, but also practitioners over 2,500 years who have used this map and, you know, refracted or reflected or whatever the word is through our own, their own experience to see what happens when, you know, when, when, when I, you know, somebody a thousand years ago, you know, perhaps in, in Asia practice these, uh, these, um, these teachings and these practices and explored them and worked with them and what was their experience. So we have a huge, um, uh, a really, really comprehensive uh, body of, of teachings, of books that have come down and written down for us, uh, written down for the last 2000 years. And everything that we have available to us today, all of the books on mindfulness and on the different states on compassion, on gratitude, on loving kindness, on the whole roadmap, you know, all of the different aspects of, of the roadmap, down to the deepest states of absorption that are really out on the edge of, of, uh, of human consciousness. You know, that the, the, those states are available and, uh, and are actually mapped out very clearly in the Buddha's teachings, kind of the nearest thing I think we have to it 
in our own kind of everyday understanding, or at least for some of us, is the, the is the experience of psychedelics. You know, kind of like the whether it's LSD or MDA or psilocybin or, or, or you know that um, not taking a completely agnostic view of 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 those right now. Not saying that they're particularly are or aren't part of the path but that but they open the mind in a way that uh, kind of it, that we can see explore consciousness in some ways and that give you some sense of kind of the edges of of the dharma practice the buddha's practice so all of this to say that we have a kind of a we have a, a sense of where we're going. Hopefully we can clarify that and I some way identify, oh, this is where I'm wanting to go. And we have a roadmap of the, the Buddha's teachings and all the teachings of, that have come down since. And we have people who hopefully have progressed a little further down the path who we can go to for support. Um, you know, so teachers, and meditation teachers play that role and that you know they may not always have gone down that path and you may need to look for you know back to the teachings or back or, or to other teachers who've maybe explored more the element of the path or what you're working with etc but there's again it just kind of builds out the roadmap and builds out the support for us on this journey on this path that we're on Again, however we want to define our place on it and our, our, our goals on the path. And, and again, coming back to, we have to walk the path ourselves. We have to walk the path ourselves. We, we have that, the intentions, we have the roadmap and all of the things that support us. But each one of us has to take this body, heart, mind, consciousness, experience, you know, family situation, all of the things that we bring, our, our traumas, our conditioning, our habits, um, you know, all parts of our being, our fears, our, you know, we have to work with those because, you know, the, the roadmap can give us a lot of support. But in the end, we have to say, you know, how do I deal with this situation? And this is where you know, I think it's really important to come back to kind of two things to remember, that we're always dealing with our own experience within the context of our intentions and the map of where we can go, where it's possible to go. We're always dealing with our own direct experience. So, um, so it's really, I think, really important to see this what we're doing as uh, not as a kind of a formula that you do some of this and some of this, and this is where you get to, but really as an art. And for each of us to ask, you know, in each moment, the, the key, the central questions are, does this lead to happiness and well-being, freedom, or does this lead to suffering? That's really the kind of the, the, the question that's kind of the, the head of the pin, as it were, kind of the question that in any moment you can ask yourself, like, if I do this, does it lead to greater happiness? Or does it lead to, if I, if I act out this habit or I respond reactively to my partner or my spouse or my kid, you know, is that, does that lead me to greater happiness? And if we have enough time and space to answer, I think we'll all say, we'll tend to say, well, no, it just leads to cycles of, you know, anger and, and reactivity, etc. And similarly, we can ask ourselves, if, I, if I'm able to just be with this experience and let go of the reactivity, and that's a training and it's a practice and it's not easy, but if I do that, does that lead to happiness or well uh, and well-being or does it lead to suffering? And we'll tend to see that that kind of renouncing of, of reactivity and letting go of it will lead to greater happiness and well-being. But we need to see for ourselves, we need to ask ourselves, you know, that question that the, the Zen master was asked, um, you know, after a lifetime of teaching, what is the core of your understanding of your teachings? And he said, an appropriate response, an appropriate response. 
you know, again, that's another way of framing that same question. What is an appropriate response? So, so when we look at, you know, we can look at it both in a kind of micro level of like, okay, in this moment, what is my, you know, what, what choice do I make based on where I'm wanting to go, based on my understanding of the teachings and the practices, based on the, this, the, what I'm experiencing right now, and use as a, a kind of a guideline, happiness and freedom in one direction, suffering in another. It may not always be clear, and we may need to kind of do some experiments of, well, if I do go down this road, what happens? You know, if I do avoid feeling something difficult and move towards something that's more pleasant, does that actually lead to well-being? Or sometimes it does. If we're caught up in real tightness and reactivity, it may not be the wisest thing just to stay with it if we don't have the kind of the equanimity and the balance to do so. It may be more helpful to step away, to change posture, to take some breaths, uh, to you know, do whatever just helps you come back into balance. So it's not, an, it's not a, 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 a set answer to the question, but we have to find that way for our, our, ourselves, you know, determine for ourselves based fundamentally on our own experience and our, you know, wider understanding of things. And then if we step out kind of to the bigger level and look at the arc of our path, um, towards some level, some greater level of freedom, you know, even if it's just the kind of little bit of calm, little bit less stress, to, to look at that and look at, look at our path overall and say, what is, what is um, you know, what practices in, in a broad way will support me and help me to get to where I'm wanting to get to? You know, so for example, you know, would, would doing more practices like loving kindness, let's say heart practices, compassion, loving kindness, joy, equanimity, would those doing more of those practice, practices benefit me in, in letting go of clinging and opening my heart? You know, for some of us, that's been a big part of our journey, recognizing, oh, these heart practices. It's not just about being aware of our experience moment to moment. That's fundamental and important. But there's also, how do I work with these emotions? How do I cultivate kindness and generosity and these qualities? And so that's one, one example. Another is, how important is it to get to really concentrate our mind and really calm our mind? practices of constant calm and concentration can be really profoundly important in our, on our journey. Because if we don't get some kind of real base level of calm, we're always in some way working from kind of almost an underlying buzz of reactivity or anxiety. You know, that's always kind of bu buzzing under there. So to really get into, to really experience deeper states of calm and concentration can be a profound support in our, in our practice. As one teacher I've been listening to a lot recently, Rob Babea, um, speaks about it as a kind of a, a reservoir of well-being, that you've kind of built up a reservoir of, of really, you know, calm and ease and well-being and loving kindness, so that when difficulties come up, they're not coming up in a kind of within a field of anxiety and reactivity, that you can come back and recognize, oh, there's this deep well of a, a reservoir of well-being and happiness. So I want to, um, for time and also because I've more or less said what I wanted to share this morning, but I wanted to just invite that reflection um, for, for each of you to kind of think for you in terms of your own practice, kind of where, where you see yourself going, where, you know, what is the, your deepest intention and goal for your practice? And again, always holding that in a balanced way, not in a kind of got to get there, got to get enlightenment in this life, because that can be just another form of striving if it's not done wisely. So holding that 
And just looking at your practice, and again, I re recognize I'm speaking to people, many, you know, some many had a lot of experience of practice and some are much newer, maybe coming for the first or second or third time to a talk, which where this might be a little bit, I don't know, something. <laughs> um, but to, um, but to, to wherever one is on the path, just to reflect on these questions, you know, how can I most effectively use the map, kind of the map of consciousness and the map of freedom, kind of broad map, the Buddhist map of, of freedom to kind of get to where I'm going? And how can I, you know, what practices, what, what skills might I work more on to kind of fill out my, my, um, um, ability or tools or skills really to be able to kind of effectively <clears throat> navigate the path and the challenges that, uh, that, that, that we'll all experience in our lives. You know, when even the best, <clears throat> excuse me, even the best roadmap doesn't give you an answer in, in every situation. So the Buddhist roadmap won't necessarily say you have to do this in this situation. It's like a map where everything's clear and okay, the road's going forward or the path is going forward, you know, path through the woods and it's supposed to go through. And then now there's a nuclear power station there or, you know, there's some new thing there that, okay, the, the map isn't, doesn't answer all the questions. Ultimately, we have to, we have to answer uh, the question for ourselves, ourselves. And, you know, using another um, Zen um, saying, you know, they, they, they can be pretty dramatic and in your face. But the, you probably, you might have heard the expression, if you meet the Buddha on the road, kill him. You know, it's a little aggressive, a little violent, but it gets across this idea that the Buddha is not outside of you, that each one of us has to awaken ourselves. And the Buddha and every other teacher can be, can be helpful, can help light the way, you know, whatever images we use, a spotlight for the dark path that we can walk on. But we have to walk the path. And that's, you know, developing the capacity to be having, have the self-confidence uh, and the, you know, and the courage to walk ahead on our, on our path. And, you know, the courage and the compassion to, to particular courage to recognize that, um, that we do have to, we, we have to walk it ourselves. But of course, we're part of community as well. So a part of um, part of, you know, this, this community of, you know, and the wider community of those committed to living more freely and ultimately the, the community of all beings, you know, all of us are in some way, you know, got, uh, on, on, on a path to, to freedom, um, although maybe taking a lot of detours on the way. So I know a lot of people have shared in the chat and I'll, I'll take a look as uh, maybe during the the session, um, uh, the breakout session. So let's move in with those reflections to begin. Let's uh, have our um, our opening meditation. It's kind of a little bit not so opening with all the, the chat, all the reflections. So take some moments to to relax and settle. Now I find that taking some time to create a kind of a platform as much as we can of, of well-being, of ease, is really important. If we're tight, we're stressed, we're uncomfortable, it's not going to be very helpful, a place to kind of open to our experience. So take some moments to sit in a way that's comfortable and relaxed. If you'd like to, you can close your eyes, let your attention come inward, kind of drop out of the thinking. You might consciously drop down, let your awareness, let your attention come into the body.
Feel the weight of your body on your buttocks, on your seat, on your thighs. And your feet in contact with the floor. Just making sure that the back is straight, shoulders relaxed, hands in, in the lap or on your knees, whatever's comfortable. Just feel the sensations of the hands from the inside. Just checking in, notice if you bring awareness to your body, is there any area where you're holding tension, perhaps unconsciously? So the, maybe around the eyes and the face, Just inviting the, that area of your face, facial muscles, the eyes, the chin and the jaw, the tongue. Just invite a relaxing of that whole area. And then coming down to the, the shoulders and the back of the neck, where we often hold tension. Just inviting a, a relaxing of the shoulders. Breathing in a way that's comfortable and at ease. Letting your awareness come into the belly and the chest, that area of the torso. And notice how that area feels. Notice if there's tightness or the breath is short, maybe the, you're clenching the muscles of the stomach. And just take a deeper breath. Invite a relaxing of the belly. Let the breath come into a relaxed, open belly. Just inviting any other areas of the body, the arms, the hands, pelvis, groin, the legs and the feet. Just if there's any area of tension to relax. And just letting the, the breath deepen. Inviting a nice full deep in breath. Long, slow out breath. Taking some longer, deeper breaths. Just feeling the energy coming in as you breathe in and relaxing the body the mind as you breathe out. as you bring awareness to the breath and invite uh, some longer breaths, you could also invite a smile to your face. To a smile naturally sends a message to our brain and to our nervous system that we can, that we can relax, that we can be at ease. So if it's helpful to think of a loved one, somebody who makes you feel happy, just letting their image come in.
And just knowing these resources of the deeper breath, the smile, the scanning of the body can all be ways of inviting a, a relaxing and letting go of holding or tension. Let your awareness come to your overall experience, just letting the breath be natural. Just the coming back to the natural rhythm of your breathing. And just check in, notice what's present for you right now, what you're aware of. what bodily feelings are are present right now. Just whatever you're aware of, see if you can just meet it with kindness, with acceptance, making space for for what's here right now. whatever mood or emotions might be present right now. See if you can just be aware of you know, what that what's present right now. Maybe the overall climate that you're experiencing. Maybe some heaviness or some sadness. It could be tiredness. Just notice kind of what is the kind of the overall background, the climate, and any specific emotions or mind states that might be present. Maybe there's sadness, or maybe there's joy or excitement about something. Whatever is here, see if you can just, just let it come let it be, let it go. Meeting this moment without without judgment, without holding on to pleasant things, without pushing away what feels unpleasant. Without spacing out from what feels maybe boring or uninteresting. Stay as close as you can to your direct experience. welcoming the guests in the poet Rumi's expression, image, guests coming to visit. Letting them stay as long as they want to stay and not not getting in a fight with them or a struggle either for them to stay longer or to leave more quickly.
in a simple awareness of the breath can be a, a support for you just in being, being here, being present. meeting whatever is present with with acceptance and with kindness is finding peace in this moment is peace the peace that's here right now whatever the the conditions whatever the the climate is of your experience Finishing with this from Zen teacher Seng San. The great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. When love and hate are both absent, everything becomes clear and undisguised. Make the smallest distinction, however, and heaven and earth are set infinitely apart. If you wish to see the truth, then hold no opinion for or against. The struggle of what one likes and what one dislikes is the disease of the mind. Just a, a word on uh, on that final um, sharing of the reflection from Seng San, just to note that there's not a problem in having preferences. I think what Seng San is saying, don't cling to them. It's the clinging that's the, the, the problem, not the, the preferences. It's uh, just as um, Clinging to love and hate is what's the problem, um, the creation of separation. So what we'll do is we will um, have some uh, breakout gr groups for about um, 12 minutes a total. There should be a, a reminder before you finish so we, we don't have the experience of people being teleported back without any warning to the big group, you know, in the middle of a sentence. So hopefully that will be set up, but you might want to just keep keep track. And um, our, our intention is just to have groups of three, and so it may not always be three, it may be two. And just to ensure that each person has a chance to share and the others listen for maybe three minutes, up to three minutes. 
and um, maybe if there's a little time at the end for, for sharing um, or just to sit quietly or come back to the large group, whatever you feel like. And what I'd suggest as a, as a theme today is just coming out of the reflection I shared at the beginning, um, just kind of where you see yourself on the path and what your kind of intentions are and your, you know, how you see yourself and where, where you want to put your in intentions or sorry put your attention um you know whatever just using that as a, a kind of a um a suggestion and then kind of whatever is feels most helpful to you coming out of that so um a, can we do the um the, the breakout groups and we'll be back in around 12 minutes or so sure um, uh, I think I have these right. Um, if anybody has any problems, please please come back to the main group, main room, and I can uh, I can I can try to reassign you here. You do you want to um, stop your video just because we're yeah live streaming and um, yeah I'm going to I'm going to put I'll my stop screen. mine too yeah. yeah and so I'm going to go do a couple of uh, little things and uh, be back uh, within ten minutes and, sounds good all right. Is there anybody that wanted to be in a breakout room that, um, okay, so Judy 
and uh, Cecilia. Anybody else? I can only wait, let me put it in. Uh, Julie and Cecilia. Okay, I will. I will assign you guys to a breakout room. I'm just kind of slow in doing this because I haven't done it before. Let me see. I am sorry. Um, it's not really, it's not clear to me how to do this, um, but I'm sure there's a way. Um, let me see. I know, let me open up the participants window. That might let me do it. Uh, okay. Mm. I can put you in waiting room. But I don't know how to assign to. Let me let me do a quick web search on this. I'm really sorry, folks. I uh, I should have looked this up beforehand. Yeah, so you guys aren't showing up in the list of people in the breakout rooms, which makes me think I'm doing something wrong. It seems like there should be one main room that's listed here, but there's not. There's just the breakout rooms. So maybe if I maybe there's another there's another tab here for no, that's the one I was looking at. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, I'm befuddled. Um, I'm not sure how to do this. Um, you guys are. Let me do this. I'd suggest we could we could talk here, except that we're we're being recorded, um, which is not the ideal situation. Actually, I'm gonna pause the recording for now. And maybe I can pause the live streaming too. Let's see. No, I better not do that. I might break something. Um, okay, I have to. I have to offer you my apologies. I will look this up to figure out how to do this and ask Nick how he does it. But um, 
but I it's a all the places that I was looking to uh, aren't where I'm finding things. There's another. Hmm, that's funny because some people show up as unassigned. Like Marie, you show up as unassigned. Would you like? We've got well, we've only got we've only got 26 seconds left, so I think um, I think it doesn't make sense to try to assign anybody. But I will figure it out for next time, and uh, and everybody will be would be put in breakout rooms appropriately. Mm. OK, so I'm getting a menu item. Keep breakout rooms open or closed now. Well, people are rejoining. It seems like. I think I I think I gave people the two minute option. I don't think no? we got. We didn't get an. Uh, did you get? Did you just get booted out? No, we just we saw because it has the timer, so we saw. Oh, okay. So you're just sort of like rejoining on your own because I set it for ten minutes, and I figured that would give two more minutes. How about if I wait another minute and a half and then I'll close all the breakout rooms? That gives people a chance to come back a little less violently. Sounds good, Pat. Thanks, Pat, for trying. Yep. I'll figure it out for next time. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a work in progress, but that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did, uh, how were the breakout rooms? Anyone? Uh... <laughs> Oh, you had a problem, right, Judy? Yeah, it, was, it was not a big problem. <laughs> In fact, that was one of my thoughts, how nice it was. And I was like, oh, I can look outside and just relax. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't take that it first. progress. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pat. <laughs> oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I didn't understand that last poem. Oh, the last poem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, with the, the Zen things, you gotta, you got just gotta sit with, you know. Okay. Um, but I, I, I think we'll, we'll share that. Um, it's part of a much longer um, teaching, but that's kind of encapsulates it. You know, if we cling to anything, even in small ways, there'll be suffering. Thanks. Yeah. That's fine. Because I know that sometimes, you know, you just have to live with something for a year and then you go, oh, oh. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I'm going to close the um, uh, rest of the breakout rooms now. You go, Pat. There we go. And then I'll, I'll get some tips for from you Nick from for next time. Or maybe Nick will be back. Who knows? There may be other people who don't know that you're supposed to like physically leave the room. Because in my group, we were like, the timer went went down. It's like five seconds remaining, four, three, two, one, and then it's just like, okay, we're still. Oh, together. okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we were still together, so we were just like, what do we do? And then one person did notice the leave button. So. Hmm. It's great oh, to the world. Too. All breakouts. Oh wait! All breakout rooms will close in seventy-six seconds. So I guess when I oh I misunderstood. When I click breakout room, then it gives the two-minute countdown. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of people still in breakout rooms, which yeah. is why we've only got thirty-nine people here. Um, is Emily back? I'm I'm back. Okay, because yeah. we're going to move into uh, we're going to move into some movement now. So. Uh, Maybe we could we could get get start not started but just kind of get standing and so when people come back in sixty seconds or however it is however long it is we can uh, we can move straight into the uh, movement. Is that work mm -hmm. for you? Yeah, it looks yeah. sounds great to me. Good. I'm going to Ready, spot, set, stretch. 
Spotlight <laughs> Emily. I'm going to mute the few folks that aren't muted already. And then I'll turn the recording on when we're uh, when we're ready here. How you doing, Emily? I'm doing great. I Oops. love your shawl. It's beautiful. Now, and I'm there. We go. Unmuted. Yay! <sighs> Welcome, everybody. We're going to start right with the movement. Um, I hope you all had a good breakout session. Just gather the energy of the sky. Just cultivate the sunshine, the blueness, all that you can feel from the upper atmospheres, the stars and the moon and bring it to your heart. And then gather the energy of this group, all of the kindness, all of the compassion, the community, and bring that to your heart. And then gather the energy of the earth, that which sustains us and provides us with so much abundance. Your heart. Now, just for a moment, just sway from side to side. You might want to pat your abdomen and lower back just to wake up. We are awake. And come to neutral. And then reach up again. Grasp your right wrist in your left hand. Breathe in. Exhale, tilt to the left. Extending out from the right hip, out through the right tip, fingertips. Breath in here. And exhale up. Switch wrists. And inhale, reaching up. Lifting up and then tilt towards the right, extending out from the left hip out, the left fingertips. Breathe in and exhale up, reaching up, undo your hands and turn your palms down, float them down. The next move is cactus arms. So inhale deeply. We'll go three times to the right. Exhale right and center. Exhale right and center. Exhale right and center. And left and center. Left and center, left and center, and float your arms down. And now for gentle back bend, clasp your hands behind your back. And now lengthen the elbows, opening up the chest, Reaching up into a gentle back bend. Breathe in and exhale. Release. Another time. Inhale deeply and lengthen your arms away from your body. And exhale, release. Last movement. Place your hands above your knees, coming into a forward bend and exhale, release your weight down. However far you wish to go, lowering your head, chin to chest, lowering down, reaching down, inhaling here, 
Exhale with a sigh. <sighs> Inhale here. Exhale with a sigh. <sighs> Inhale here. Exhale. <sighs> and slowly press on your feet. Place your hands above your knees and roll up. Reaching up, bring your hands to heart center and release to the sky, release to the room and to the earth. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. That was beautiful, as always. Really appreciate the movement. Thank you. So just coming, coming into, we're going to have a, a shorter final meditation today, so it'll be relatively short. So take some moments to establish uh, your posture, then sitting in a way that's grounded, the sense of rootedness, kind of grounded in the earth. You could think of it yourself as a mountain, you know, resting on the kind of the embodiment of the of the earth. Letting your attention drop down, come down into the body. Relaxing the shoulders. Perhaps taking a few deeper breaths to just come again into a sense of ease relaxed just remembering these simple Practices for calming the body and the mind. The deeper breaths, inviting a smile. Reflecting on gratitude. Some things in our life that we're grateful for, which can kind of shift the attention from out there and the things that we so often focus on, something's wrong, something should be different. And the coming inward and reflecting on gratitude can help us really remember what we already have. There's so much in our lives that if we stop and pay attention, we we're grateful for or can be grateful for our loved ones, our families. You know, it's all, it's different for all of us, but it may be a good health, spiritual practice. So to remember that and for, for gratitude to be a resource really in our meditation and, and in our lives, come back to gratitude. and opening to whatever is present right now with, with acceptance and with kindness.
making a space for whatever is here right now, whatever's present. Letting the breath be a, be a focus for our awareness, an anchor, kind of keeping us in the present, if that's helpful. Just letting the, the natural experience of the body breathing be, be the place where we rest our attention and that we can come back to when the, when the mind goes off into thought, as it will. And cultivating a, a wise and kind relationship with the thinking mind, not to think of thinking as a problem. Just to notice when we do get pulled into thought, into worry, into planning, into remembering, daydreaming, whole range of things we can get caught up in, get lost in, get pulled into. And to recognize that the thoughts really have no authority whatsoever, except what we give to them. So it's only if we give them authority, if a worried thought, if we take it as the truth, the way things are, all oh, things are going wrong, or oh, I'm worried about this. But if we can just see it as a thought, let it go. If there is some underlying worry, anxiety, come into the body rather than getting caught up in a story that the mind creates, allowing ourselves to, to stay with the direct experience, with the feelings, breathing into them, just letting the space be there for whatever comes up. In these final few minutes of the meditation, 
we might take a, a moment to appreciate your own intentions and your practice today. Appreciate that you've taken this time out of your day and out of your, your life to really come inward, to open to what's present in your heart and in the mind and in the body. Now, however, quote, successful we are at it, however, however much it worked or seemed to work, that just the, the intention and the attention are what really creates the, the soil for really deepening our practice and deepening our freedom. You know, sometimes it can feel like, you know, the seeds that we sow uh, falling on stony ground. You know, oh, that was a waste of time. But I don't think it really ever is if we really have the intention to be present and, and really just try as best we can to be present. So appreciating your efforts today, and your intentions, and really connecting with everyone who's here. Maybe some have already left, appreciating all of us who are here together. Just feeling this gift of community, gift of Sangha, how we support each other in really in often in ineffable ways, in ways it's hard to pin down that feels really kind of energetic rather than more kind of explicit or conscious. So appreciating, maybe sending a wish of loving kindness out towards everyone. You know, or you could, if you have your screen open, you could even kind of look at the images maybe individuals and just wishing everyone well. May you be happy and be safe and healthy. Just sending a wish of loving kindness out to individuals, to everybody, and out into our world. You know, where right now there's so much, so much suffering with the pandemic and with all that's going on around it. And all of the, everything going on in relation to the, the just demands around social, racial justice particularly, and social justice more broadly, and the desperate need we have for caring and compassionate leadership. Um, just feeling ourselves part of all of that without needing to get into any of the specifics of it. We all know where we are, certainly if we're in the United States right now. And just what, how we can bring wise and compassionate action into engagement into our world. Do what we can. You know, I come back to Mother Teresa. We can't all do great things but we can do small things with great love. So breathing in a wish of kindness to yourself, compassion, and then breathing out compassion, kindness to the world, anywhere feels appropriate right now for you, out into the world. I'll finish with uh, Diane Ackerman's school prayer. In the name of the daybreak and the eyelids of morning and the wayfaring moon and the night when it departs, I swear I will not dishonor my soul with hatred, but offer myself humbly as a guardian of nature, as a healer of misery, as a messenger of wonder, as an architect of peace. In the name of the sun and its mirrors and the day that embraces it, 
and the cloud veils drawn over it and the uttermost night and the male and the female and the plants bursting with seed and the crowning seasons of the firefly and the apple. I will honor all life wherever and in whatever form of the world on earth my home in mansions. So I want to thank everyone for your presence and your practice here today. It's been, as always, a joy and a privilege to be together. We're going to just finish with a few announcements. And I just share very quickly, I think, two, two brief things. One, if you're interested in the social engagement and bringing these practices into the world, I'm going to be on a separate is it, I'm not sure there'll be a link, but for Mindful Engagement 2020 uh, at one o'clock today, um, you can log on to that. And um, I've, uh, I've got a four day, I call it a four or five day retreat, at home retreat online offered through Southern Dharma. That's on the, no, it's not on the IMCW website, it's on my website. Um, uh, but if you'd like a longer period of, of practice, that's available along with other wonderful things online. And, um, and just finally, for, for my announcement, just, um, just a, a reminder of that uh, Dana is the practice of generosity and um, appreciate your support um, for me as a teacher and all the other teachers in IMCW. And uh, if uh, for the details of that, uh, Pat has put in the uh, chat box or um, uh, the uh, the information on Dana. So thank you for your support in that area. And Cassie, I think over to you.